Hey everyone, and welcome to another TW Anime 12 video on World of Warships. This video is actually a pretty unique one as I began taking out the Graf Zeppelin game. I'm using the Graf Zeppelin game, which is an, outsta is an outstanding ship, personally speaking. I really do enjoy it. Now, starting out in my Graf Zeppelin, I went for second rebuild. I haven't got manual fire yet, but to be fair, you don't actually need it. The secondaries are very accurate as it is. Though they'll be very scary once you get the manual fire, you will definitely destroy destroyers easily enough. You also notice that they give it hydroacoustics, which make it very, very intimidating to other imposing destroyers that drop torps or try to hurt you or want to hunt you down. It makes things a lot easier when trying to deal with them personally. That's one thing I greatly noticed. It makes it a lot. It makes things a lot easier when you're trying to deal with destroyers. Now, as you can see, I've got a nine-plane fighter squadron, two five-plane torpedo squadrons, and a ten-plane dive bomber squadron. You can run either H or AP. I personally am running AP at the minute. And without further ado, let's get into this game quite a bit more. No, I'm using the Aslan mod for a replay, as also I can't I can't figure out the World of Warships replay function. I tried what what it said in the forums, but I fucked up personally. <laughs> Ends up breaking the game on me, and I think I deleted something that shouldn't be shouldn't have deleted. As you'll notice, I just noticed this, it says minus thirty five ping, but that's due to the sheer fact I'm running this replay wise. So. This graph, in this year actual replay of the graph set, and I've actually got very lucky, I managed to do nearly, actually I did 200,000 damage, it was like 198,000 damage in a graph set, which is ludicrously high, since everyone says a graph set is shite, but <laughs> 200,000 damage, oh, that's some going in a graph set, alright, especially at tier 8. So, what's the new bonuses for playing the graph set now? You now have a choice between deep water torpedoes and regular torpedoes. You also have the choice of two fighters and three dive bombers with six plane squads, or you have a choice of one two one, which I went with one two one, which at the minute currently is my favorite loadout, which comes with five fighters, nineteen dive bombers, and nineteen torpedo bombers in reserve. Which it isn't that big, but you can do a lot of damage with it very quickly with them. The AP bombers still have a circular drop, which is uh, is just amazing. The amount of damage you can do with ten AP bombs once they hit, it literally is it is amazing. The amount of damage you do in one drop. Now the torpedoes are a bit on the meh. They're a bit iffy. They're really really slow. They got really short arm, really short travel range. Now this year at match starts are really slow for me. Because of the sheer fact I was in a bit of a joust with the carrier and where he was sending his fighters and where I wanted to send mine to try and counter him. Well, it's just a bit of jousting that way to feel each other out and what we're going to try and do with each other and how we're going to kill each other. Now, there is actually not much of a point, personally speaking, with using manual drop on the circular drop feature for the Graf Zeppelin as you're nearly guaranteed to hit. Now, using uh, on the torpedo bombers, yes, definitely... I would definitely advise using manual drop on the torpedo bombers. And with the, this Bismarck's fucked. It really is bollocks. Like, look at that bear with that shimmer. It just ripped it apart. Then it took like five torpedoes and that was hit down. De pretty much devastating strike. Now, at this point, I'm beginning to feel a bit more ballsy if I remember correctly. I'd said fuck the fighters and went for the key. Which was quite interesting, I was expecting them to actually strafe my planes, but it didn't actually turn out that way. Which quite surprised me actually, I was expecting to lose them squadrons when my planes engaged him here. Because I was expecting them to do a counter strafe and sacrifice one of his planes, but no he didn't actually. It shocked me quite a bit, I, it really did shock me. This is where I went for my first kill on the battleship key. And this year one I ended up with... Three kills, or was it four? Was it three or four kills? Now, as you can see from my AP drop, I done twenty five thousand damage with four bomb hits. And then I done the next falling twenty thousand damage with four torpedo hits and got the kill at fifty two thousand damage. As you can see, the torpedoes aren't very good at causing flooding, but 
the draw pattern makes him a pain in the ass to avoid, uh, just a pain in the ass in general to avoid as a battleship. It's dropped in pretty much a diamond formation. And this is where a guy in chat got really salty with me calling AP bombs. <laughs> like, you don't understand the saltiness to be honest with you. Now, at the minute, my secondaries are at 7.9. I've yet to use a 20% bonus, so it'll probably be about 9 kilometers, nearly 10 kilometers once I get that there done. Maybe 10.6. I think I'm going to have about 10.6 kilometers on my secondaries once I get that there done. So it's going to definitely be a very beefy ship when it comes to the secondary firepower. This can actually be seen in some of the other matches I've done with it where I actually won a knife fight with a Kabrosk. Yeah, my secondaries killed a Kabrosk, which is a bit of a what the fuck, a Kabrosk like. I, the Kabrosk is so good with its guns. It's like its main selling point. There's like no point to the Kabrosk torpedoes. Yeah, he, that, guy, that guy really just whined the rest of the match. So if you want to read that there, just read it as well. He whines, whines, whines the whole game about me killing him so quick. Like, to be honest with you, the key should be AA built. The key is quite good AA. Like, my my key personally is 93 AA or something like that, or 94. Or some, it's some stupid like that. And it, it, it should start planes from anything really easily never had an issue with it seemed like a pretty solidly built anti-aircraft ship really it was really well defended in my opinion for that there and that's me being a bit of a dick saying about i don't know who the hell he is <laughs> when he was saying he was writing on the forums and all about it well, that's just me a bit of a dick there to be fair to you <laughs> that's me i just didn't want to deal with it, it was, well deal with bs so i was a bit of a dickhead now up here this is where I get a bit of, this is actually a really real, this is pure luck, like this is just pure luck and pure shit luck at the same time for the person that this happened to. The that guy Rocket Surgeon did make a very good point to him, not all ships need to have good citadels, it's true, look at the British battleships, their citadels suck and look at British battle crew, uh, the British cruiser line, like it's so easy to citadel them but their damage output is really really high. Like the amount of fire damage you can do in a British battleship, never mind the AP damage, which is pretty shitty. But on the British cruisers, the AP damage output due to the plunging off the shells is ludicrous. And there's some guy or 75,000 matches I couldn't really care to be honest with you. Um, out of them, out of the AP damage for the cruisers, the, that's pretty much it. The British cruisers are just AP you fire, and that's the that's what make, that's the selling point. As you can see coming up on this Moscova, I have my two torpedoes and my bomber. The Moscova's got 62,000 hit points. I'm coming up with my 10 plane torpedo bomber squadron. I go in for I went in for a manual drop on this here. In which my manual dropped on 28,000 and my my with five hits. I managed to get all my torpedoes off on the Moscova. Which was surprisingly efficiently hitting them. I never thought I would see the day where I would be able to kill a Moscow like that. There, I don't know if it was just because he made such a major cock up <laughs> off that there play. And that's me up to 112,000 damage. So, as you can see, the Graf Zeppelin is pretty beefy now. Like, I don't see how much more they can change it to make people happy. Like, it's got good bombers, it's got good torpedo bombers, its fighters are. They're acceptable. They're usable. Like not <laughs> the secondary's got a buff. The hydro it's got hydroacoustic snar. Like I don't see what could be the issue personally with this here. It's all round. It's a pretty decent carrier. Like a hundred and two thousand. I'm only five minutes into the game. Or a fifteen minute game. Like how much? How much more can you ask for out of that? Really? So much you can ask for. Now, I do make a cock up on the upcoming part here, which is, you can't make cock ups with the Graf Zeppelin, it's not forgiving at all to be honest with you, it really isn't. As you can see my cock, my cock up is only left me with one fighter so I'm a bit screwed that way. Now, the Hindenburg itself is a very dangerous shit, it's, it's very dangerous. 
Now, by itself, you can hit it effectively with the Graf Zeppelin, but do you see if there's anything else near, even if it's a tier 8 cruiser? Just don't engage it. It'll just wipe your planes out. I learned that. The I learned this here very painfully here. Shit, I just hit my knuckles off the keyboard. <laughs> Let's see. Must give it three kills before he die. He is so salty, that guy. He makes a fair point, to be honest with you. It'll change. It's a closed beta ship. Well, it's a beta ship. It's going to get buffed. It's going to get debuffed. And to be honest with you, I think they're just going to buff it more and more and more. Just to make people happy. At the minute, they should just leave it how it is. It works well. It's not a bad carrier. And you can get pretty decent matches in it. I think it should be kept like this, personally. Maybe a small buff to the secondaries. Like allowing it to fire across the flight deck and instead of limiting the 105 range and firing arcs, it would be really if it would be really good if you could do that there. As do you see when you're against destroyers, the limited firing arc really makes things hard for you when you're trying to kill it and avoid torpedoes. Now the hydroacoustics do give you an advantage, but nothing what you would call a major advantage. And that guy went in the strafe me there, which it fucked up, to be honest with you. His strafe, was, I was lucky that the way he done his strafe there. It was just pure luck how it missed. Or I could have taken a lot of playing losses, to be honest with you. And I'm very lucky I get three hits in the Hindenburg here. Which brings me up to 146,000. And as you can see, that was my fuck up there with my, fire, with my torpedo bombers. It brings me down to one squadron. But I still have my dive bomber squadrons. So, whilst I kill to bring up the, my 200k damage that I was bragging so much about on the Grav Zeppelin, you'll soon find out very quickly. And I can't remember, it was our three or four kills I got, but it, was, it would have been a damn good cracking if I could have got it and showed it. Let's see. Get my torpedoes back up. Oh, there's a Sal. The Sal is bloody scary either way. It's probably one of the most scariest ships right in the game next to the Des Moines. The Minotaur is hit and miss. It depends on the person who built it. It really does. Like, I've seen Minotaurs where there's the A is pissed per up, but I've seen others where, like on my Minotaur, where the A just drops everything out of the air. There's like no point to fight no other carrier. It's probably, it's actually one of the reasons why I like playing the Minotaur, for that one reason. Though I personally do think British battleship Duke of York should be given defensive AA. Like that battleship, it's a premium ship and it's got nothing going for it, like other than shitty Hydro. That literally is shitty. Like uh, four kilometers range. What are you gonna do with four kilometers? Now I could understand if it gave it some like eight km, like a surveillance radar or something like that. I could understand that there very easily, but they just didn't. Would be nice to see it, but I just don't understand why they couldn't give it surveillance radar. To me, it seemed more like common sense to give it than anything else. Oh. 27,000 and the this torpedo wasn't these that was a nice drop by my on my on him there with my torpedoes allowed me to rack up to 185,000 which is outstandingly good and at this point I actually get farmed out by the Edinburgh and I start trying to escape slowly but surely and I accidentally hit my hydro instead of my Defensive fire, so I made a bit of a cock up there, and I didn't realize until the last minute. I'm sort of thankful at this point. Sort of hard when you make that cock up, to be honest with you. Yeah, I would rate myself as a pretty average CF CV player, like I said to him. I'm far from the best, I'm far from the worst, I'm pretty average. So I'm nothing special when it comes to, comes to it really that way. Now, that's another thing I noticed with the Graf Zeppelin. It's got a really nice repair time. 
Like, his activation time is like 25 seconds or something like that. It's ridiculously good. It allows you to tank a lot of damage and do a lot of damage back to whatever's engaging it, especially destroyer wise. Now, I make a bit of a fuck up here when it comes to trying to kill the Hindenburg. I was hoping to go up and kill the Edinburgh, but the Edinburgh isn't there. <laughs> As the guy says, I'm going to focus the hell out of you in the future, so hopefully I'll see him in some later matches, to be honest with you. I'll um, detect it again. On this here one, I didn't pay too much attention to my torpedo bombers doing a drop on the Edinburgh. I probably should have, but I more so tried paying attention to why about hitting the Hindenburg, in which I didn't do very well at doing. As you can see, I only got an incapacitation. And I missed my deep. I missed my torpedoes on the Edinburgh. I probably should have went for went one after one for after each other. I probably should have done that there, but I never thought that through. Which I probably should have. This point, they're getting really, really close, and I actually begin shitting myself. But I'm quite lucky as I'm on the side where my secondaries are most predominant. So I won't get a kill like, but I'll be able to do some f vicious damage to them before I die, which is, so it sets my mind at ease when I can do some serious damage. This is when I begin to realize, oh shit, I actually do have defensive AA and I can use it. It's a moment, it is far too late, but because of the fact I didn't use it earlier, it means I can survive a bit longer as he then begins trying to bomb me and trying to torpedo me again so this year allowed me to survive longer due to that there as it causes his bombs to miss me essentially now I go for I actually go for the Hindenburg and get a decent hit on it here when well pretty much I segregate it off by itself I was hoping to get, actually get the killing blow on this here but instead I only got 9,000 for two hits I wasn't paying attention to my torpedoes, as you can see, I only done 4k to me there, I was able to shrug it off pretty well. Now the Graf Zeppelin, as you've seen there, I've done, well I've done 198,000 damage, and before that they're flashed off, and decided to go back to the loading screen, it was a bit of an annoyance, as you can see, as you can see, well, decided to flash off and go back to the loading screen here for some weird bloody reason and start to replay all over again anyways thanks for watching everyone hope you enjoyed that there and that's me do that's the pretty much yeah the graph zeppelin's fixed and it's usable it threw me back to the loading screen actually no it didn't oh it threw me back into the it, yeah it threw me back into the replay anyways thanks for watching everyone i hope you enjoyed that there and as you can see the graph zeppelin's pretty much fixed and to all those that bought it hope you you're happy now that they finally got around to fixing it and hope this is the final version of it anyways thanks again for watching hope you enjoyed and please like and subscribe